is. It's cleaver time. Themselves another W. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would be very stressed. I, I guess that's what I want to say. Like, I, I do favor Constitution Trap, so Talon would definitely kind of solidify, uh, you know, their position as number one in SCA if they were able to win this game. I feel like uh, it is a game that you cannot make a ton of mistakes. And, you know, you have a lot of high execution heroes. The Shaker, as you said, the, the Enigma. So it is definitely going to be an interesting match to watch. We'll see whether they can uh, perform to, to the level that is necessary. And I mean, just looking at Secretion, like they have so many arrow combos. Like if Carlo play, he can play around the back, he can play around the tiny, the snare from the Naga, the song. It's insane how many plays they can just do. And you know, for forcing BKB, especially now that uh, they, you know, the cooldown is that high, it just feels much easier for Secretion to force cooldowns, force BKBs, and then, you know, just get Roche for free or do so much. Like, even Roche is really easy for Secretion because they have the song, because they have the lasso. Um, yeah, I guess they do have Tombstone on the side of Talon. They didn't go for the Morphling you were talking about. I was a little bit scared because I definitely felt like it could have been a good Morphling game. But they decide on this Naga. I think uh, it is more stable against the main lane. And that's probably why you went for it as well. They start off with uh, three bound to secure it for the side of Talon. That wasn't too it's a nice bad. addition. Carlo is going to be playing on the Marana. It is a decently greedy support duo with the Marana Tiny, but again, as you mentioned, once the Blink Dagger comes up on the Tiny, it gets uh, significantly more scary. Uh, with the initiation, with the very lengthy lockdown that they have, a good way to actually catch out the puck because that is also something that Execration might be struggling with this game. Makoto seems to be very elusive. Lasso is, of course, great, but the moment he gets a Lincoln Sphere, there is a really tough opportunity to try and kill off that puck. Oh, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and I, I think that's why I'm a bigger fan of Tiny 4 versus the Shaker. Just because the cooldowns are really low. Like, you don't care if you don't really get a toss back if, like, your Avatar's combo doesn't kill someone. You can respawn, and you can just do it again, smoke again. It's so easy to reset. Whereas Talon's heroes, you just really need to be at the top of their game, which in the DPC, it seems like they were. So, let's see if they kept it up. Let's see if, uh, uh, you know, they, they just have their mental game. As, as good as it was during the DPC. Now this Jeb's lane, let's take a look on how it is going. He's three and two. And I think like level one is decent-ish, but I feel like this lane quickly gets out of hand with uh, Paolo's getting more levels. Especially if, uh, you know, you, if you lose some Mato here, Paolo gets like a level four is there or something like that. Carlos could get an arrow and Jeb's uh, quickly dies if the Shaker's not there. You know, top lane is playing scary game in against Ollie, who's uh, on the Undying. Radiance and Tino you know, is just with killed. almost no HP walking about. Back to the lane, needs his insatiable hunger, but it's a pretty lengthy cooldown to be able to get some life still going. However, Shanks is just constantly pulling the creep wave back, and that should give uh, Tino at least some farm. Obviously, that lane tends to be a little bit more problematic. That's also the plus why Enigma is so strong. I Sometimes gets picked up against Lena, just so that you can uh, deny creeps and pull the lane back and get the equilibrium on your side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely one thing that Enigma excels. It did get nerfed quite a bit, uh, you know, when they nerfed the cooldown of the Eidolon. It used to be that uh, every wave you would be able to deny a range creep, and now you only get to that state when you get level 5, level 7. But it's still, like, it, it, it was definitely a little bit overpowered, so I, I don't think the nerfs were unwarranted. But it makes this... You know, lane controlling aspect of Enigma a little bit weaker than it used to be. Well, currently 23. The plus uh, of them pulling the creep wave is that you're going to get free farm the entire time. Mid is going pretty decent as well for Makoto. Again, always got to be a little bit careful, especially if rotations come through. Marana arrow could be scary, but the tiny Avatos later down the line could do the exact same shenanigan. And bottom, yeah, don't think Jabs has too much to fear. He's just going to try and keep the lane drag back and maybe get the shaker to roam a little bit because there's also a chance that you can kill off the bat rider it is a mid tends to be a very outplay potential kind of lane because bat riders auto attack damage is for instance horrible whereas the puck actually has a pretty decent auto attack at his mm -hmm. disposal 
That's true. And the bench rider, you know, sometimes it is very high uh, level duels in the mid lane. Sometimes bench rider overextends just a bit, you know, gets hit by a tower and he goes for a dive. One gets used and he, he could dive thinking he could get the kill. So for sure. And even like when he's diving, a TP to the tower makes the uh, death proposition even scarier with, uh, you know, either Carlo or the uh, Shaker TP to either the mid lane. Denied. We'll see what happens. So far, the Ima doing actually a little bit better than I expected. Jabs doing pretty decently in CS, but follows also very close to him. And probably has a couple of Vedolos though, so the numbers are always a little bit uh, misleading. Well, they are currently 1k net with their head on the side of Talon, so their lanes are going uh, extraordinarily well. Currently, obviously, what? after the laning stage, a couple of rotations can change that very quickly. So it is a farm heavy game and Nagasarin is a god at farming. Uh, same with the Broodmother and if they have some stacks, no, those are not being made for the Batrider just yet. Yeah, the, I think it's all going to be about the timing of this Blink Dagger. Like if he gets a, a fast Blink Dagger, there is a chance that the Puck and him can actually chase Palos. I don't feel like the Puck can solo shoot this Naga by himself if he tries to you know, go after her. But with the support that can match the mobility of Puck, there is a possibility he can get a coil into a silence, you know, before Palos and Manta, and he won't be able to song out of uh, whatever he's doing in the lane. But I keep tabs on that. Shaker actually did bring out here 6 and 2. I'm assuming uh, a bit of that CS is just illusions of the Naga. But uh, already very close to his arcane. Looks pretty well on the Shaker. Not too bad. After that, you can immediately go for the Blink Dagger. So th the timing could be pretty uh, extraordinary in that regard. 10 denies top side for uh, 23. And uh, he's just having the time of his life not a single kill just yet so there's not been too much action going on this game especially mid surprising to me uh I tend to see batrider versus the puck matchup go into a bit of a brutal try and outplay the opponent uh, game they're just uh content with getting the farm on the map as well as they possibly can mm -hmm. not much happening but now the six minutes time approaching I think we're gonna see some rotations here. Shake and run actually just uh, kind of preventing each other from getting to the room. But the Undying is middle, so let's see uh, who gets it. They they should be able to get it on town, especially with Puck having the orb and he's soft. So oh oh the tiny somehow gets it. What is happening here? Bob. Dream Gold got snapped on the Batrider, trying to get back. Makoto has a, an orb. Bob is actually trying to bait Makoto in, but Makoto is taking a lot of damage here. Tombstone on the high ground is going to mean Shanks has to dip out as well. But a great fissure block. He's stuck. Oh my lord. Great catch coming up from Q. And that is first blood. That was a pixel perfect shaker play. Yeah. I saw Q play earlier today. He played the Tusk. And my god, that guy is talented. Yeah, that was that was incredible. You know, that's that's the sort of play you need to be Radiant's constantly doing in Shaker. It feels like this hero, like you need to be taking every ounce of the hero early on just to maximize your timings to get that early blink, and that's you know that's as much as you can expect out of the best Shaker players in the world. And uh, also kudos to Mikoto. He almost got baited. You mentioned, you know, Bob trying to bait him into the tower. He held his ground, had the arm, but didn't Radiant's go for it. And because he was patient, attack. he gets, uh, you know, first blood anyway. So that's still, sure, it's not the best Raider kill, but the first blood makes it worth it. Currently not it. Uh, yep. Top lane here, we do see uh, an approach, very nice talk here off the lead, I think Happy Avalanche and with Bob rotating, okay, this should be a death range to Savage, actually gets a really good LSA, but I still feel like he should be dead, the Bruce going for a very good dive and the tree <laughs> actually grabbing that kill, Q now being you know, ooh, that is, that is very unfortunate, he was having a great game, and he gets taken down, double kill for Batrider, so both mid laners starting on a row, but that kill is even more important because there's a tower uh, hitting, uh, sorry, there's a catapult hitting the tower with the group very close to his level 6. This is going to be amazing for him. Oh, black hole bottom lane, big oh. catch onto Bayless, can they get the kill? Yes, they can, Dream Goal thrown out as well. 
Carlo needs to get out of there, but the high fives are being sent out, and they will get a double kill onto Makoto. That's the big threat of level six on the Enigma. Jabs immediately pops his black hole and surprises Palos completely, who's not even level six himself. And with the Eidlons, is going to go for the tower push in the bottom lane. So this is a great counter play. Obviously, they lose a couple of heroes in the top lane, and immediately they try to make something happen on the opposite side of the map. Oh, but Big TP's yeah. coming in as well with the Bat Rider joining in. The arrow is... Oh, it's going to dodge, but hit Ollie on the back end. So snap one, get the other. And they will at least keep the puck alive, because that could have been very dicey. A little bit sad for Ollie, of course. Yeah, uh, very similar plays going on both sides of the map. Talon and Execration shredding down the carries in the beginning. Both mid, uh, heroes being enabled by the supports in those plays. But uh, I do feel like Execration is slightly the winner of this because the tower took way more damage in the top side. And with level 6, it's inevitable that the Broodmother is going to get this tower, whereas Jabs, he doesn't feel as comfortable with staying closer to that tower because his black hole is a big cooldown. So that is usually the price you pay. As Enigma, sure, you can get a solo kill to carry, but that comes very far in between. Uh, there you go. Tino gets the tower and we'll start doing through things. The beginning here uh, of this jungle just being occupied by the brood. They're starting to get uh, a lot more done on the map. Top tier one has been secured. Carlos still trying to defend the bottom, but uh, completely Dyer's alone is going to be a little bit scary, especially with Makoto rotating through. Speaking of Makoto, he is top net with the game at the moment on that puck. 3 0 0, going for the Witch Blade and the Witch Blade does give you solo kill potential onto uh, the enemy supports most of the time. Oh yeah, I'm surprised that uh, Execration gave away the the tower here with the lasso being available for Batrider, but he was finishing his travels, so maybe they're going to try to use that timing to force the mid tower now. Uh, in terms of farm here, the CS is very close between the Lina and the Naga, but uh, Lina surprisingly even slightly ahead. Uh, doesn't, didn't finish the Millstream just yet, but having a lot of uh, free time in the jungle. But that will change, you know, this Rune Mother will occupy the Dire Jungle, and I'm expecting 23 Savage to have to move very soon. Well, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, just a little bit of farming bottom lane there. Pretty, Makoto is still in the area, as well as Jabs, who's gonna go for the Guardian oh, Grease first item cool. rush. Uh, they want to go for Palos, but he does have, uh, of course, quick TPs behind Dyer's him if need be. Tower. They have a bo bots on the Bat Rider that just came off cooldown, so Bob can always join the bottom lane in case it's needed. And they're looking so much for a possible engagement. Makoto did dip, though, um, knowing that ob obviously if he leaves the lane for too long, the mid tier one tower will be secured and with the mid tier one tower taken down roche is always going to be in the back of your mind with one bad team fight away yeah that, that's definitely important tower black hole onto bob bottom lane arrows not going to connect he tried to snipe it but there's just too much lying around the area and it will be a black hole for bob and they even find the coil onto carlo that's going to be a second kill coming in for Talon. Again, uh, they're using their cooldowns whenever they can to get themselves kills and open up the map for their team. Hey, it's amazing. Like, once Talon... If Talon is the one initiating these engagements, it's definitely going to be looking good for them. You know, the Naga doesn't even have song learned just yet, and uh, this is prime time for them to be using those cooldowns. You know, once more levels come, more items come, I think it will be harder. I think it's just easier for integration to be the ones being the aggressors. But, uh, you know, not really the case right now. Tiny still trying to farm the blink. Pretty much tied with Shaker in terms of timing. So, because Execration is not playing as aggressive with the Muran and the Batrider as I expected, they, it just opens up for talent. But I hope Execration makes an aggressive move now, even with the Shaker not having blink. I think just letting them use Coil and Black Hole and not punishing that is a mistake. And there we go, Talon 
they are being the aggressor without having coil. Uh, was that an arcing uh, room coil? Because it's pretty much all uh, ready. That's not the longest cooldown spell. Only 75 seconds. Shangs needs to disengage, but he's going to get caught out. Q gets that kill, and that's going to get him a lot closer to the blink dagger. They're also giving him the free farm top lane. That Yeah, Q is going to have a blink dagger in the next three minutes. Then uh, all of a sudden, you got even more big, bad ulties to deal with. Still top net with is Palos, because it's an Aga Siren, and there's so much farm on the map, and they're keeping up significantly, but in, in the last couple of fights, Talon does seem to be the scarier team. Yeah, I mean, quite devastating death because it is the position for uh, on the Dire side killing the enemy for it is also trying to get a blink. So, uh, you know, they were even in effort and now there's a 600 gap, uh, more than 600 gap between the, both of them. Shanks, uh, and it's tough because the Broodmother is up by in the jungle, but it's not like there's a lot of synergy between these two heroes. It's not like Shanks can ever toss. And suddenly the brood is gonna finish this shaker off, I think. Uh, especially because the echo slam is ready. But maybe that's what they wanna do, just force that spell. Oh, the ever toss is not okay. Oh, that's a big problem. Echo comes in with Mikoto TPing through as well. Uh, team No is trying to life seal his way to victory with the insatiable hunger. Oh. Is he gonna get away? No, he cannot. But Shanks in the tree line doesn't actually have a TP for 30 seconds but they don't know that he is still in the area. And they find one kill, which could have definitely been a two in that situation. Yeah, you kind of it, it, hit it right there on the nose. Um, it's kind of very scary to try and toss this shaker into anyone on your team because of the big mm -hmm. bad bully echo. That is a definite threat, especially against a hero like the Broodmother. Speaking of that bully echo, it's a cooldown right now. The blink is ready for Q. So I mean, this this is the perfect shaker game, you know. Sometimes it doesn't happen like that. That's why I was a little skeptical. But uh, they they have it. They definitely have it trained. They have it. Uh, Q probably practicing quite a bit of the hero and got a very good timing. So they're probably gonna chill for now. Although there is black hole ready with his greaves. I wonder if they want to use the 15 minute timing and uh, force this tier two tower a bit. Yeah, Oli also went for uh, Tombstone max level at the moment. He has Tombstone level 3, uh, the only one that can really deal with it pretty quickly. I mean, they have a couple of tools. Marana with the leaps to a Broodmother, and uh, Nar Naga can just Song of the Siren and take it down. So it's not the biggest threat, but if you get a, a big fight going on with Black Hole on one end, Coil on the other end, a Shaker annoying you as well, having the Tombstone on the side could be very problematic because you gotta. Their heroes need to get close range to clear it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, baby. Uh, we do see Broodmother here trying to address that Shaker problem, the Plug problem going for five. A lot of the time, Screams is the first item these Broods go for. But I uh, you know not that much value out of uh, Griggs on Coil mid lane. They find the Undyne. The Tombstone gets dropped, but the only should be dead is fake. Oh, Coil misses. But it is going to be uh, a disengage from Ali successful. They got a lasso, which is a really long cooldown. Luckily enough, he had an arcane rune. Uh, still 65 seconds and no lasso to be used. But it's kind of their best uh, tool to fight at this stage because Shanks still doesn't have his blink. And it's kind of what Execration is waiting for. Then I don't think that they're going to fight, though. That's their entire lineup is really not based on fighting against Talon whatsoever this game. And Palos needs to be careful. He doesn't even have Song at the moment. Level, can he get out of there? Manta, nope. The Shaker Echo comes in and there is no singing his song out of there. Big kill secured and Palos gets Dyer's dropped with 23 getting uh, closer to finishing up the BKB. Yeah, that was a really good rotation from Tal. Uh, they even have a top. A lot of uh, split boards here happening with the tiny brood. But uh, just for a defense mission coming from 23. The tiny will finish his blink dagger soon. So this opens up execration to play. But I, I'm kind of confused with the way they're playing. Like, it feels like none of the cores is really trying to do much. Obviously, the Naga can't, but. I would expect the bad rider to be playing with the run or the tiny a bit more, but the uh, tiny yeah. just choosing to be top, trying to get the scraps that the broodmother leaves him. I feel like he's just giving Talon everything that they want. Uh, I really expect that the bad rider should play a bit more. He will get his in a really good time because of the action attacks. Let's hope that they can do that to the bottom lane. Oh my god, again, Velos. 
Again, cannot even respond, gets himself caught out. Yeah, one time it's the uh, a Dream Coil Echo, the other time it's the Black Hole. Obviously, their spells are on cooldown right now, but Execration is just not a lineup that wants to fight uh, at all. Like, Tiny has his blink, but maybe they can make some plays, but it's kind of pick off, drag back, get a kill, and then play a 5v4. Because when it comes down to full on team fighting, Talon's got their number. I mean, obviously, they, they get a lot of value out of the bad TV, but I, I really feel like you don't need to be farming ancients when, you know, Koi with Black Hole were cool. There were like two times in the game where they could have done that. Tiny mid gets engaged, that blink dagger doesn't really do much if you get engaged like that. Rise in my presence. Yeah, they're uh, being pushed back right now. They uh, are already on double Radiant digits in terms of kills. Q, he's going for the uh, Lotus Orb. Uh, as mentioned, a very good tool. There's the Song of the Siren. Is Looks like it's just going to be a defensive Radiant's one. Does he time it correctly? The arrow is going to hit onto Makoto. The damage comes through. Makoto is going to get taken down. The lasso was used in the last second, but 23 is going to go for the fight against Palos. Does he have the damage at all? No, it does not seem to be the case. Well, Bob needs to be careful because his BKB just ended. He's going to get caught out. And Shang jumping in with a great avatar play. Jabs is going to get taken down. And now the damage Tino with the sustain as well. With Echo Slot of Pi from Rune. Shanks is in trouble. He's going to get finished off at 23. Has fallen. Ollie's on the run. Can Ollie get out of there? It does not seem to be the case. <laughs> Q even misses the fissure there to help out his buddy. Not that it would have mattered even in the slightest. But it was uh, a bit too deep there by the side of Talon. Yeah, dude, the brood actually keep into that fight, just press fight, the echo did zero damage, and he was on two or three targets, I think. So, finally, brood giving a contribution, all, all that farm ends up being used, Dyer's and that's not only four heroes dead, attack. but mid hero tower die, and they equalize the towers Dyer's in the mid lane, tower. and yeah, this, this is a start, you know? I do feel like this draft, if the Naga gets gigantic, it is still going to be a favorable de uh, draft for Execration, but the Naga died way too much. They, they need, you know, 5 or 10 minutes for Halo to farm items, and hopefully with the BKB on the bat and with the pipe on the Brood, they're gonna start playing more aggressive and uh, just use the space follow needs to recover. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, looking a little bit rougher in that engagement obviously they didn't have black hole there and uh, the, most of their stuff was on cooldown uh, as well especially the black hole that's the biggest threat that the enigma brings he's got an aether lens now so he can even position it slightly better his next item is going to be the bkb so that the only thing that can touch him is going to be the bat rider and without a aether lens it's going to be really tough to get a good last so can actually go to towards mid is dropping low gets caught out though it was not shanks with the avatars combination arrow from carlo coming in and makoto could not respond two deaths in a row he was 701 just a second ago and yeah, I mean, twice in a row. that's why Kai is such a good pick for Spock. Uh, they finally switched to use in this and they were like, being so, dude, it's so hard. Like, <laughs> you have ruling, yeah, you have the, you know, the spiders and these illusions. This Enigma is going to suffer so much as the game unfolds. Uh, five middle here, let's say misses, but Tino is just hungry for her. Alina, look at the body blocks there. Oh my god, the spider body blocks just to piss off 23. He doesn't have a BKB on 23 either. And that's a big problem here. They're going to go in. Ava, toss play coming in. They're trying to spread, but there is no echo for another five seconds. Shaker didn't have it available. They even spread out as much as possible because they expected the echo to come through. And the drag back on Q is going to be the kill secured. Yep. They're ready to go. It pretty much they get the blink dagger on the tiny, and all of a sudden they can play on the side of execration. Yeah, very impressive how they were able to come back. As you said, it was a slight overextension from Talon that bottom side. It didn't have a black hole, but uh, you know the, the momentum of the game was definitely on their side. So I don't blame them too too much. But it's really what's happening now. All of those fake offs, the fact that the brute got the mid on tower, it just opens up so much space that uh, they can play around and that it's not warded. Most of the wards from Talon were actually taken down. The only one they have up is that one in the mid lane. Doesn't really help once the fight is on the other side of the map, uh, especially in your jungle. And Makoto need, really needs that Linking Sphere because there's now also an Orchid on Palos, uh, as we saw previously on the Enigma in the bottom lane. So, yeah, if Puck gets silenced, Puck is dead. That's just straight up it. Uh, that's kind of how the hero works. It's really hard to catch him, but once you catch him, the hero is super squishy because it tends to be full glass cannon build. 
And because of that, the Lincoln Sphere is getting pretty close and being done. Uh, of course, the Shaker is getting very close as Lotus Orb as well. That's going to be a good way to get, you know, counter the Lassos, uh, the Orchid, the Roots from the Naga Siren as well. And probably later down the line, the uh, Broodmother Scythe, because that's definitely an item that will be built up uh, on Tina. Yeah, you do have the force on the dying to try and help the buck, but usually that you're going to be playing so much for forward that it's hard for uh, Oli to, to help Mikoto, if he, even if he wants to. The Lotus, though, definitely going to be of help for Q. Uh, he's a little... I guess he can disassemble his Arcane Boot, so he's actually only a thousand gold away. But, uh, yeah. Pretty decently farmed. Uh, currently, Carlo Radiant on that Mirana awesome. is more farmed. That's the reason they didn't go for the Broodmother uh, guarding Greaves because mm. Carlo already has it. Wow, that's that's, that's insane, insane how far he is. Yeah, <laughs> so bad. It, it's incredible, actually. Uh, top lane smoke. They are looking for the Broodmother, but they only find Shanks. I think you know that's a conflict of right, but definitely not what they wanted. Oh, he's actually oh, the is here. Yeah. keeping them occupied. Lasso Drag comes in, holding Q back in to kill him off before he gets the echo off. He pops his echo, still does a decent amount of damage. Black Wolf gets used by Jabs with the Aether Lance, gets a two man catch. That is absolutely everything. That echo holds him together just long enough for Jabs to go ham. And now they're even going to walk into the pit to get themselves the first ages of the game. That is a godlike play. Payload is too far away to go for the song steal. So first Aegis should go to Talon. Aether Lance and is so underrated. I like the only reason they were able to get like that black hole like literally in the cliff was because of that item. So uh, I guess great read from Jabs. Uh, uh, there with the follow-up LSA from 23, so he doesn't even have travels, he was just, you know, in the right place, the right time, ended up smoking with the team. Uh, really good that he contributes. You know, Paolo, he got that kill with the Orchid, as we talked about, but he's yet to join on this fight. Now that he has heart, I'm assuming he's gonna feel more comfortable approaching. Uh, and now that a black hole is on Kudo, even though there's ages on Talon, wouldn't be surprised to see Execration kind of keep the same pace because they know they can actually fight without black hole. Bayless is actually going shard, which is kind of interesting because they have big cooldowns like Black Hole. And if you can't interrupt Black Hole and you pop Song of the Siren, you can still heal your allies for quite a decent amount, which is kind of cool uh, yeah. to use that as a counterplay. All right, just just need to buy uh, Holy Lock, become uh, Naga support, and Gucci. Top side, there's going to be a catch onto Jabs, but it's not going to work out. Shanks is the one that's actually in trouble. Team Cola on the back end. Carlo is going to get caught out. The Crunch doesn't need to be careful because there are scooter webs all over the place. Tino got himself the Aghanim Scepter now. They got to deal with that spinner snare annoyance that is, uh, is going to be able to catch you off guard. It's kind of surprising that he went for uh, the Axe because I've seen most Broodmothers just skip it entirely. Yeah, I expect the side of Vice to be picked up in this game, especially because we were talking about the link and the on the pot. It's just another way, and, and Brook can easily break it with the uh, Spawn Spider. Though. But did go for this Axe. I think it's very good versus the Shaker. That's probably, you know, the, the Shaker and the Enigma. They want to be initiators later on, and it's sort of a pseudo haunt because you can globally kind of master their position a bit. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. And it's across the river. Oh yeah, he did. He's he looking for a guy here. Arrow lands onto Ollie. There's the setup you were talking about. Bob wants to lasso Makoto, but the Echo oh. Strong. Oh. Bob is in trouble. Song of the Siren's gonna heal up Bob. He gets the BKB off and they're gonna try and disengage. There's a black hole in 15 seconds. And the coil is available right now, but with the Murana ulti, Palos should be able to disengage. Actually, Makoto does have a gem, so you do have to be significantly careful. Yeah, a little bit of over in, an over eager echo. Go shaker. Go shaker. Oh, okay. He's playing a very aggressive game. Knows that Jabs, of course, is right behind him with that black hole in case it's needed. Uh, but yeah, with the black hole being up, execution now will chill, especially without having the Song of the Siren. This could be a free tier 2 tower. There's some split hook from Bob. But uh, definitely not enough to warrant any TPs from Talon. Radiant Honestly, this is the first time in a long time. 
Take off the ceremonial rope. Oh, okay. you, you drop one. <laughs> no, ceremonial robe is pretty good. Actually, it's really good. Uh, slightly annoying. It's uh, just lying about in the bottom jungle area, bringing it out so you can. See. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Huh. Oh. Even pro players miss this sometimes. It's okay. Someone's gonna find it. So Naga, he's got other things on his head, like GPM, 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 GPM. Yep, nine illusions, you know, micro. That, that's very high intense. Uh, uh, micro intro uh, Yeah, I think the blood run is great here. Gonna get that damage reduction as well as uh, a little bit more potential. But the Lotus Arc is up for a Q, so. If he can drop the Lotus Orb, there's a lot of value he's going to be able to add to the team fights. Kalos towards the bottom lane. 23 still has the ages for 45 seconds. They're looking to possibly go for a fight, but Tino is pretty much out of mana. 90% of the game. Yeah, I mean, so. he still has the Arcane Ring. Like, he's struggling a lot with mana because he disassembled the Boots of Speed here. Yeah, and he likes to spam, which obviously is fun. Radiance oh, yeah. top tower is under oh, attack. Actually, has an Aether lens, which is a strange combination considering he went for Ags, and Ags has nothing to do with your cast range. Is he going Octary here, just like to, to have as many uh, spiners there as is possible? Because I, yeah, I, I agree. Like Aether lens seems very weak. He doesn't have like a side of eyes. Sure, you're gonna get spawn spiderlings from further away, but I don't think that warrants such a big item. Dyer's courier has been killed. It's an interesting well, choice to say the least. Look, look at the mini map, dude. There's so many little things crawling. Just like identifying, oh, they actually do see that, uh, yeah, they actually find out where the entirety of Talon is. There were small, but they were able to find all of them. So really good usage of these fighters there from Tino. And the smoke is not going to allow them to actually play as they want to tell them. They have all their cooldowns. It would be an ideal fight if you can connect onto someone. You know, Ali also walks through some uh, nastiness there. The spider snares, giving vision to uh, the enemy being smoked up, which is, you know, a nice tool as well. My god, Tino, just get mana. Yeah, he's constantly buying mana. Now he bought three enchanted mangoes just so that he has mana sustain again. Uh, this is actually kind of hilarious. He's bought, uh, I want to see like at the end of the game, how much mana regen he bought because I've seen him constantly with clarities and mangoes. You know, like now that I'm watching this game, I I I'm just thinking what happens, like if they cannot connect a smoke from Talon, like you have 500 spider link in one lane, then you have 10 illusions in the other two. There's not that much wave clear on side of Talon. Like, Lina usually is considered decent wave clear, but I don't think she can do it all that. Like, this Aelot, they don't do any damage. The Shaker, oh, there you go. They just lose and dying. I, I, I feel like the lanes are gonna be poor, and it's really hard for Talon to do anything. This, like, the state of the game, I know that the momentum was on Talon and all that, but uh, if they don't get some really good smoke eggs, which seems really hard because of the eggs on the brute, maybe that's the only reason he even went for it. Because, like, they just cannot do anything in the map. They, they're they stuck. They don't push waves fast enough. They cannot get kills. They're, they're, like, this is a great timing for them, but they're just unable to use it. They need to find the uh, Enigma though every single fight because Enigma's got BKB Black Hole, uh, uh, Aether Lens at this point. Doesn't have the Blink Dagger yet. But the Bat Rider, he's going for the Aether Lens now. He's got the Force Off. Okay, so they get the Force back. That's a little bit of a miss there. Shanks needs to disengage. Will not be able to get caught just yet. And even if he does, you still have Palos with that Song of the Siren healed on the other side. Like, their sustain is immense on Execration because of the Pipe Guardian Greaves plus Song of the Siren. In total, that is 40% of your max HP that you heal with the full Song of the Siren. Yeah, definitely insane. Oh, you know? Can you get away? Arrow lands onto 23, but they don't want to go back in because it's scary. 
There's a beautiful connection onto two, including Palo. Black Hole from Gap through the Roche Pit. And Palos is stuck to the other damage. They definitely do. And that is a big kill. Roche is up in 10 seconds. It's a super fast Roche respawn timer. Will they keep an eye on the pit? They do. Yeah, they have the two so still in the pit. So that's going to give them vision of Roche. Yeah, I mean, that's the dream. And I, I, I was kind of surprised because, honestly, when I was watching that, Execration, they had everything they wanted. They were pretty all the lanes, Talon couldn't do anything. And then Execration does this really unnecessary move in the enemy tier 2 tower when Rogue is very close to spawn. So, I don't know where that confidence came from. Oh, there you go. Not even a point, but I got buyback. Buyback. Yeah. Oh, good. Dying last more. So, it reflects. He just kind of hold that position down. Income space. Let's get the damage to get rid of jabs on the side at the very least. That's going to be the Shaker walking in as the Echo. He's the play. Can he get it off? They actually get the shot. They get it the right side. 22 slowly. Age is in the process. And they're going to get absolutely slacked. They even bought back on the Naga for this. But the control was there. The Echo slam was huge. And now they just need to disengage as much as possible. Even Bob bought back. Palos, can he get out of there is the big question. The Ghost on the chase. He's got Dream Goal available again. They've got so much lockdown for this Naga Siren. They dropped the Dream Call. The Tombstone is there. The Glyphia comes in. He's just not moving. An inch. Fisher block on the other side. And they get the kill, including Carlo, who just also bought back in just a span of a minute. This entire game just turned around. Wow, I, this is the highest, like, the, the quickest change of pace I've ever seen uh, in a long, long time. Like, I, I really feel like Execration had everything they wanted in the game. They, they had the entire control of the wave. There was nothing telling to do. I feel like they scaled much better to late game. And that play, just trying to have a cause of Mina, just totally crippled them. Uh, it's it just, I mean, obviously they got him like with the respawn timer, but at the same time, they knew Rush was spawning, they knew how important he was, and Talon, out of that, they're, they're just gonna take two lanes of barracks. There's a tier 2 top, so sure, they can hold the lane, sure, they have the Naga Brood, but uh, you know, the momentum is just completely gone. We went from a thousand gold advantage to 18k, God knows how much it's gonna be once, you know, the... Full damage is done. Radiant's bottom barracks are under a radiant. Yeah, this is uh, pretty painful. Luckily Radiant's enough, there's still tier two tower at top, but immediately, uh, actually, the TP got cancelled there. Uh, they tried to TP top and said it's going to be Makoto to try and get rid of the tier two. They actually get the loot in onto 23. This has the H has the site as well. Delta is in for Tino, but the great two man back home from Jabs. And the damage goes up. Bob is dead. He does not have a body again. But Shank's going to be the next target. And another double kill. They still do not have the Naga alive right now. They can honestly, and they are going for that finish. 23 is already pumping out damage towards the tier fours. And right now, what can they do? Bob's is on a dieback type. They're just gonna clear up this radiant base right now. Yeah. I guess. I, honestly, I don't know what they can do. Like, they don't have any cause. If Tiny was alive, maybe there was a chance for some callback play, some chaos being created. But, uh, yeah, this uh, illusion stay hard. You know, they are annoying. I don't think it's gonna be enough, though. And yeah, they're just uh, pushing it out to finish it out. And it is, Atino actually has an Octree right now on the Broodmother, so he gets more Spinner Snares. But is it going to be able to help you? There's no fortification for 4 minutes, 23 even still has the Aegis. So they're going to focus their attention onto Payload. Shanks wants to go with the Avatar's play 23. If he loses first, like, he still has a second. He doesn't have that big threat on the opposing side, but do not Shanks if the tiny is going to be taken down again. And Payload has a song still available, will be forced to use it just to be able to stay alive. Is he going to re-aggress? Maybe kill off the Undying quickly? Radiant That's the big uh, attempt, but it is going to be Struggle City to continue because 23 knows what his target is, and that just finished the Ancient. He axes up the Mirana, the Fraser Block to keep him occupied, Echo Slam to make sure nothing happens, and it's Talon that takes game number one after what was essentially one great catch with the Black Hole towards the pit. A slightly too late buyback uh, coming out from the Naga and a horrible team fight around Roche.